Good day ladies and gentlemen, I'm totally the toad and I'm back with another video. Today we're gonna continue on my endeavor to make a 1890s-ish wardrobe and we're gonna start making the skirt. And for the skirt I have chosen this lovely pattern, again by Black Snails Pattern, it's where I got all of my patterns for this project. And it is in fact a bicycle skirt from the 1900s, so it is a a bit later than 1890, but it's just so gosh darn lovely, so I I still wanted to do it. I do have plans of making an actual bustle skirt at some point, but they will have to wait until spring when I have <laughs> better funding to do that. So for this project, I have chosen to use <laughs> this fabric. It is a nice cotton fabric, quite lightweight, but not too light because um, in the instructions it says midweight uh, fabrics so I didn't want it to be too flowy but also not too bulky and I figured that this would be a decent bet. Uh, it's supposedly 100% cotton anyway which is nice. Now as you can see I've already cut out the pattern pieces to save myself some time uh, because these videos I've noticed tend to be really long. Now, this piece that I'm holding is the applications, I think it's called, and it's in fact what you start with uh, according to the instructions. And the instructions says to fold in the sides and press, and then, I'm gonna cheat and have a look again because I read this five minutes ago and I already forgot. Now I know why I didn't remember the instructions. It's because they are kind of weird. I don't think it's the instructions fault, it's just so different from what I've done before. So from my understanding, you take all of these, fold them in, like so, but neater. Press. So you you press and then as far as i can tell you sew just across from where the seam allowance is i think that's to give it some stability and then you clip away a lot of the seam allowance i think i love the fact that you start off by something with just like what do you even mean i don't understand but anyway we're gonna get going I have now taken you guys to my ironing table and I'm gonna try to press it according to the instructions and hopefully manage to film how I do it. But the lighting in here is terrible because it's not really set up for filming so I'm sorry about that. So this is ideally one of them, it looks okay from the front, from the back it's not uh, great but I guess not terrible. It would have been so much easier if I had one of those wooden pieces to put over to hold it in place while it cools. I started off making this, I think I got it right. So on this next one I'm going to show you what I did. I can't 100% be certain that this is right, but it seems right to me. And if it is, it's super easy. You take one of these that you pressed, you fold it open gently, turn the right side together so that you get this nice little point. What I did was I just took a needle placed it so just to hold it in place then you stitch from this point here just straight across using small stitches now I did this by hand because I think it's easier <laughs> because otherwise I need to thread my machine and stuff I will need to thread it for the next step once I've done these but that's for later I guess so I'm gonna do it by hand, just small. I do back stitching. You 
don't need to, I think, because this won't take any strain once it's on. But to make them small and neat, I prefer doing it. Yeah. So we'll do that. And after I've done that to all four, four of them, we're gonna attach them to the correct curl, curl skirt panels. <laughs> and I think, if I'm not mistaken, on the pattern you can see where that is. So I need to get the pack, pattern back out of this bag. And then we can do that. But first, let's just do some hand stitching. So I've stitched uh, this little thing. What you do now is really scary. You snip off quite, quite close to where you just stitched. like so, because then you can flip it so it's right side out again. And uh, the pattern suggests choose a knitting needle to just get that point back. Now we have a good point again. <laughs> so at the one I showed you, I put some needles in just to see how it would lay once you put it in place. You don't really need to do that. I have uh, pinned the applications, applique, it was called, to the skirt panels. Um, it was, uh, as I suspected, very visible on the pattern where to place them, so there was no issue there. I'm gonna top stitch these down on the machine I'm gonna plug that in and just do that and I'll meet you guys back afterwards. So uh, we have, a, or I have, completed putting on the application. And why is this black here? Uh, it's not very even because I cannot sew straight for my life as we've talked about before. But I think it's even enough that I won't be distracting. So what they say to do now is to take this piece that I'm currently holding and cut off the seam allowance on the right side only. This is because on the right side we'll be adding the pocket, because this skirt has pockets! And it actually indicates this on the pattern as well. So they tell you both in the booklet pattern and on the paper pattern. Yeah. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna find some scissors and just snip snip away the seam allowance. After we've done that, it says to stitch the pocket to the facing only. Now, what that means is more up for debate. What I think is, if you look here, there is indicated where the pocket should be. And Seam allowance, 5.8, cut off at right side only, and then pocket, left side only. So that means that you cut off the seam allowance where there isn't a pocket, and then you stitch the pocket in place where there is a seam allowance left. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, as you can hear from the voice that I am currently uh, using. But <clears throat> I think that's right. So we're gonna start by just cutting this off. That's uneven. Okay, so we're done. Now we're gonna grab one of the pockets. Pockets is precious. And when I say one of the pockets, <laughs> I mean one of the pocket uh, halves. Not that I'm not gonna have two pockets, but I, you need two pieces to make one pocket. Wow, I am explaining stuff that uh, is super obvious. Stitch the pocket to the facing only right sides together. On the left side here, we still have this little thing that sticks out. To that, we're gonna take the pocket and place it, but uh, it's gonna be a bit further down. So I'm just gonna check how far down it's gonna start. But then you just sew 
the long hair, which makes sense. It, it does. It does make sense. It's just that I get it and then my brain goes, huh? and then I get it and then my, my brain just, huh? but, but it does make sense, I, I swear to God. So I'm just going to do that and then I'll check back with you again. Yesterday I got a lot of work done, I didn't film any of it just because my boyfriend was home and I still feel a bit weird when he's sitting next to me and I'm just filming. But what we did was put together this monstrosity. <laughs> it started off by putting together the two back pieces and then connect the side piece to the back piece. So. We have all pieces together, but the, but the front, uh, which goes in a bit later apparently, uh, with some shenanigans with overlapping and such. Uh, what the instructions says to do now is just press all of the seams open. They don't specify when to hem it, because <laughs> you kind of have to. This, this fabric frays a lot. Uh, I'm gonna read the instructions. But I think the next step is to create a really big pleat so that these two uh, appliques that we made before meet. So something along these lines. So it's like a box pleat, I think. Uh, and I think there's going to be some pleating shenanigans going on along this line as well. But we're going to press it first before we do anything else. So let's do that. I have come to the conclusion that I really don't like pleats. I like how pleats look, they add such nice volume, but making pleats, it's my nemesis. I mean, look, it's upside down. So what I've realized, if we can just get this, because it's kind of a big uh, thing, is that you're supposed to do a pleat, a box pleat here, it said, uh, and that means that these two applications will meet. Good, all good. But the rest, then you have some more numbers here. Three. Th so it's supposed to be like three? I don't know. Uh, we'll see what I do. I think I've done it. Uh, before I can do any of it though, I need to hem it because all of the seams are just rolled up right now and that won't do. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you what I think is the right uh, pattern for the pleats. So this here is where we're at. I have two versions of the pleats. This side here I think is correct because when I look at this picture it looks like there are sort of box pleats in two places, in the middle and here, and that's sort of what happens when you do what I did now. Uh, the other side here was my first attempt, and uh, it's a bit messy, but you can see it doesn't get this sort of inverted pleat effect, uh, so I think that's wrong and I'm gonna go with this, and hopefully it will fit around my waist because I feel it does seem kind of small when you do it, but hopefully it's right. At least this part here with the box plate is, is correct. But I'm gonna uh, redo this side, pin it, uh, mirror it to this, and then just baste it in place as they say to do. Let's talk you through what I did yesterday uh, that I didn't film. I completed one part of the uh, waistband, because um, the waistband is two part, so it doesn't go all the way around your waist. Uh, since it buttons up at the front, um, which makes sense. It didn't when I cut out the pattern pieces. I remember being like, why? But it makes sense now. So this is the back, I think. I, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna show you on this front piece what you do. Um, first, you just take the two pieces and you connect them as you usually do, right sides together. What you do then is 
you open it up as so <laughs> you <clears throat> you don't do what I did because I started as you can see here I started hemming it uh, automatically because that's what I normally do but that's not what you're supposed to do what you're supposed to do is you just pin it down and then you top stitch along the edge to keep it in place uh, I've done it by hand I have actually done everything by hand except for the year applique thus far I was going to do more by machine but then I just didn't bother <laughs> Uh, and I'm gonna catch a plane in just a few hours and I'm hoping that I can sit and finish this up on the plane so that when I get back home I can just attach it to the skirt because uh, that's the next step and I was also really confused by this when they were like you attach the waistband before you attach the two pieces together but uh, I, I think that's also because it uh, buttons at the sides. So I'm gonna rip out the piece that I hemmed here and top stitch this down on the plane hopefully. We are really quickly going because I think my battery is dying again. I'm just gonna really quickly show you guys how to attach the waistband to the skirt. Here's uh, the waistband, here's the skirt. So what you do is you put this edge here that's longer and you sew it down then you flip this and this will still be turned upwards so it's going to be like doing this with one hand was really difficult but when this is turned up you can then flip this over and fell it down on the inside so it will cover all of the raw edges I had a memory that this was really easy <laughs> but for some reason my brain just went this when I tried to explain it but yeah so I'm just gonna sew along this entire edge here and hopefully it will line up with the width of the uh, waistband otherwise I don't know what to do with my life so we'll see I had this idea that I was gonna try to put some makeup on for every time I was gonna film this video but then I realized that I'm really lazy with makeup because when I sit and sew why would I put on makeup but then I realized I have to film and then I'm... so what we're doing now is we're attaching the facing um, to the inside of the waistband, oh, no. so the inside of the waistband, uh, to the inside of the skirt and what the facing looks like is just a long strip of fabric that you attach right sides together and then you flip it to the inside and you top stitch it in place. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like on the front piece here that I've got. Okay, so this is the very poorly lit front piece you can see here. And if I just flip this up, you can possibly see, if it will focus, that I've just attached a piece here and I've top stitched it from the right side in place. Uh, and you're really supposed to do three stitches, so one, two and then the top one. Uh, I think that's to give it some stability. And I, hopefully I can do that. The thing is, I was hoping to wear this skirt for Christmas, which is in three days. <laughs> so I'm very late with finishing this skirt up. I don't think after I've done this there's that much left. Uh, what you do after you've done the facing is that you sew the sides together and after the sides come to the buttons. So if the sides go well I think I could potentially do it in time. but. Uh, yeah, I'm cutting it a bit close. Let's just pin this really long piece of fabric to the back and side parts of the skirt <laughs> and do the facing so we have at least done that step. So, did I skip filming a few steps? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> I skipped filming the entire completion of the skirt. I have a good explanation for this though. <laughs> I really fudged up the end because the thing is, the last point of the instructions were something along the lines of and then you neaten the raw edges with an overcast stitch. I am 100% sure that I didn't do this part 
correctly. So next time, because there will be a next time, I've already planned redoing this entire skirt, but in a wool uh, for winter time. Because <laughs> this is pretty lightweight um, cotton. And then I know what I need to redo. So let's have a look at what I need to redo. First off, this is the pocket side and it's sort of bulky. So it doesn't lie nice and close like it should. It sort of bulges out. And I think it's because of how I attached the two panels together and also how I felt the seams on the inside. Uh, it's still very functional and it, it holds my phone. No issue, which is so good. These buttons are just decorative decorative but it, it does bother me that it's it gapes it doesn't look so neat and if you can see here is how my felt little seam ended up so it's not completely straight across here as it should be and it's a, just a bit bulky on this side it's much better there is still just a little bit of bulk but nothing as egregious so this side is fine. It was the easier side. It is, I think, just a little bit big. Um, when I don't wear it with my corset, which I'm doing now, it does slip a bit. If I wear it with my corset, don't think it moves around that much and it fits pretty good. Pardon the socks. It's so cold. I actually think it looks really nice and with a skirt I've actually completed my entire project of an entire Victorian-ish wardrobe. You might think and wonder that the corset, you did not make a second video about finishing up the corset. Well, <laughs> that's because uh, I'm gonna mention this in the next video about the corset because there will be one. It's because I attended a course in corset making and uh, actually uh, completed a corset in that course. Course, 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 course. Which I am wearing. Uh, I'm sorry about the undressing part. You can see here. Uh, but that means that the corset I started, which is almost done by the way, it's very likely to be too big and I will need to redo the entirety of it. Because this is so much smaller and it fits very comfortably. So I didn't think that through. But anyway, for the skirt, I'm mostly happy with how it came out. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. The bulky part of this and the fact that it gapes at the, um, the pocket does bother me. And it's one of the reasons I will redo it. But the pattern itself, I really enjoyed. And the overall look and the length is just great. Uh, and with the blouse, so I will wear this a bunch. It's also probably one of the most comfortable skirts I own and it's easy to get in and out of, which is also a plus. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe and all of that jazz and I will see you guys next time. Bye!